Hello, how are you doing? So today I am all in my little Procreate iPad setup. It feels like ages since I've been doing Procreate videos. Please let me know in the comments if you like Procreate videos because I like making them but I'm not sure if you guys like them so let me know or vote in the poll. I'll put it in whichever corner it goes in. Today I am going to create a little cartoon, cartoon? A little cartoon portrait of one of my pals, Charlotte, and I recently have been doing a bunch of these for clients and I get a lot of questions how I've been doing them so I decided to show you the process. So yeah, I just use Procreate, I've got an iPad Pro, I have the bigger one. Um, I don't think Apple sell this anymore but I got mine from like a secondhand place and then I also have the Apple Pencil highly highly recommend these two pieces of equipment if you have the budget go for it I bought them with my student loan when I was a student so wise investment anyway let's get into it so this is the photo I have of Charlotte and I am just going to outline it and make it look sort of cartoony style I've seen this style around but I don't know if it has a name so yeah I thought I'd show you the process so firstly I need a black pen and I need to make a new layer so I'm not drawing directly on the image of Charlotte. And then I have my studio pen. So I actually have two versions of exactly the same pen. So what I usually do is firstly, I'll zoom straight in. Sorry about the close angle, Charlotte. By the way, Charlotte has a YouTube channel. She's a uni student, fashion blogger, absolute babe. I'll link her in the description. So what I like to do is outline the eyes. So I will go, ooh, first, I forgot something. I'm going to change the opacity of the layer that Charlotte's on. So with two fingers, click on that and slide it down a little bit. Go back to the top layer and then draw it on because otherwise, especially if it's quite a dark image, you can't see your own lines. So I do this and then sort of copy the outline. <laughs> And this pen, it's just the studio pen. So if I touch lightly, it's thinner. And if I press harder, it's thicker. So that is basically all I use for the outlines. I'll fast forward bits of this that aren't very interesting, but uh, yeah, that's basically what I do. Also, it's really hard to draw at this angle. Usually I'm all tucked up on my chair um, in my cozy clothes and eating some chocolate. So drawing it on a desk is really weird and it's very, very flat. There we go. As you can see, there's a bit of back and forth. For the eyebrows, I never do the front bit, especially on girls, because generally it's kind of faded in and it just looks a bit strange if I keep the full thing in. I actually think I've done that too high up. I'm telling you, this weird drawing angle is not the one. Like that. And then... There we go, and then do the other eye. I like to do quite a thick line towards the outer lash line, mainly when they've got makeup on, because usually that bit of lashes is quite thick and it gives the eye some, some shape, or at least that's what I like to think I'm doing. Then I'll just do the features of the face effectively. So I'm gonna outline the shadow of the nostrils and then the nose itself the nose is always the bit that frustrates me the most <laughs> I'm not sure why it just always seems to look weird sometimes I do this bit at the bottom sometimes I don't I feel like today might be a don't but we can go back to that and then for the lips just the same again I outline the top lip and I'm gonna close her mouth fully because otherwise it might just look a bit strange. Um, and then the bottom lip. Again, I always seem to struggle with the bottom lip. I always end up having to do this one a few times because I feel like if it's a bit off, you can really tell. There we go. Right, so I've got the main features of the face. I'm just gonna make this bit a little bit thicker so it matches the other one. Then I'm gonna do the eyes. So I usually do the outline of the is it the pupil, the iris? Is that the coloured bit? Every time I do these drawings, I forget the names for body parts. <laughs> Why am I so incapable? I promise I am smart sometimes. Just sometimes. Like that. 
and try and make sure that the pupils are both the same size cool then i like to try and avoid doing too many lines underneath because otherwise she's going to end up looking like an old lady that's not what we want so we don't do them <laughs> um top tip for you there i'm just going to do a little bit of a smile line up here and that's basically the face done so now i'll do the outline There we go, and then this is hair. So I'm gonna start this up here and make it a bit thicker on the bottom. I've actually overlapped that a bit too much. Just erase that. And then, yeah, so that's the face. We've got some earrings. So I'm just gonna do this. And I always press and hold on earrings, especially if they're hoop earrings, because I can never get the perfect shape right. Um, so it's easier just to let Procreate do that hard bit for me. Why not make the most of a good app? Procreate, by the way, is like 9 99 I think, on the app store. So under a tenner. So, so worth it. I always forget that you do have to pay for it, but I've just... It's just so valuable and so worth it. It does a lot of things that other very expensive software don't even offer. Let's do the outside of her hair first. That bit's not working. Right, so I am actually not gonna do her hand just because I find hands very difficult to draw and these icon portraits are sort of like head and shoulders, passport, size, not size, style photos. Less of a mugshot though. So I will just end up creating a bit of a shoulder here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of guesstimate where the hair would be if it was like not being touched <laughs> like that right okay we'll adjust that more when i have drawn the shoulder in then for this bit i'm gonna start it a bit lower and actually join it back up with that first piece i did because it all kind of comes over together and then oh that was a bit large I always find the end of hair, like the ends of hair, so difficult to draw. I don't know why, it's just always been the case. I've just never ever <laughs> liked doing these bits. Does anyone have any tips on how to get these actually looking okay? Because I can never perfect it and I'm, I always get so annoyed at myself. I mean, that kind of worked. Cool, so I need some shoulder. Put the shoulder in there. Like that. And I hate trying to guess the other, the other arm, especially when it's not already drawn. I might end up having to move it later on. I've got to try and guess where her arm would naturally be. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty good. And then just fix up this bit of hair. What does that look like? Right, now this is the time I usually turn it off and see, usually like flick between. That looks quite good. I'm just gonna do a little bit of arm detail, bit of her top. She's got a, a gin glass in her hand, I think. So that's what's underneath at the bottom. Gotta love a gin. And then this is where the other arm would be. All right, so I think we have the basic outline. So what I'm gonna do now is create a new layer and I'm gonna create the little shape at the bottom. It's like a wonky diamond. I never do it super even. I quite like that it's a bit abstract. I always draw that, press and hold, and then procreate makes it into a solid shape. And what I'm gonna do is just place it so then once that's drawn i'll zoom into that and i'll just get rid of if i put the eraser on for the eraser i just use either the soft hard, soft airbrush or the hard airbrush and i'll just switch between them depending on what i'm using it for currently it's on soft wait no currently it's on hard airbrush um and then i'm just going to get rid of the bit that would be behind her like that and i've actually got a dot there that shouldn't be there are you on the other canvas? 
I do this a lot, I accidentally put dots on a layer and then I can never find them. My camera stopped recording here, but basically all I did was erase the parts of Charlotte's arms that were outside of the diamond and then I went on to the definition in the hair. Cool, and any over here? No, I think that's all right. Right, I'm gonna do the eyelashes. I always almost forget the eyelashes. So I'm gonna make a new layer. So what I do, I use the same brush I press a bit harder on it so they're a bit thicker and I'll do a couple of eyelashes with a little bit of curl on the end. And what I do, oh and then don't forget the bottom ones, I do the bottom ones a little bit thinner because obviously they're not as pronounced. And then I'll take the brush, I'll make sure it's on the hard airbrush setting and I'll lower it so it's quite a small teeny tiny little brush and then what I do is go in and I'm at this point I'm zoomed in to the point where you can literally see the pixels and I will sort of point the end so that you can see them a bit better like cool and then obviously the same for the other side so I could go in and do it again so let me just show you a quick before and after so this is effectively if I left these brush strokes like that can you see the difference between the eyelashes they look like big slugs so I don't do that I obviously use the eraser but as a little cheat method because I am lazy I'm gonna duplicate the eyelash layer so now I have two and then I'm gonna click this cursor flip it horizontally so now they're the other way around and place them like that let's just get rid of these bottom ones I'm just going to turn the image off in the background again see what it looks like cool I'm happy with that I'm just going to merge all these pen layers together now so they're all just one image if there's any shortcuts that I'm doing, by the way, that you don't quite understand why I'm doing it or what I'm doing, I have a top 10 tips for Procreate video. I will leave it linked in the i button. I'd be happy to create a new one. So just let me know in the comments and I will create another little like Procreate, Procreate top tips video. Like I said, I love this application a lot. <laughs> so this is the basic outline. Have I drawn in a random spot again? Yes, I have. I always do that. And now what I do is fill it in and add the colour. But my camera's dying, so I'm going to change the battery quick. And we're back. Right, let's do the colour. So I'm going to put the image of Charlotte underneath again. Actually, wait, I'm going to move it. Let me put it back up to full opacity. So you can see there, if I'd have left it um, full opacity the whole time, you can't really see where the black lines are that I drew. Um, so it, I just find it much easier to do that. So I'm just going to move this image like so and i will now create a new layer in between the photo and the outlines so i'm going to collect a color off of charlotte's skin tone usually it translates too dark on like on digital images it did it in illustrator as well when i used to do a lot of illustrator portraits so i usually take the color and then brighten it a little bit so what I do is because I have created the layer underneath the outlines, if I draw, you can see that the color is going underneath them. So what I'm gonna do is just outline the skin tone color. And then all you do is drag and drop the color over and it colors it in fully as long as you've got like a solid shape i usually get a darker color so i'll just pick this up myself create another layer and make sure it's still underneath the drawing lines and i'll do the same with this before i carry on actually something i used to do was just sort of fill in this and i could do the same with the hair color and it'd fill it in however that really restricts me when it comes to shading and sort of making the most of each portion of colour. You'll see in a little bit that I like to sort of isolate each different colour that I've used and add a bit of shading, add a bit of shadow and highlight and it kind of makes the image pop. 
so that's why I do spend the extra little time of sort of outlining it also gonna cheat on this bit because I'm gonna put hair color over the top so it doesn't matter that I've sort of gone over that line I should have done that here but I just forgot so I'm just gonna do the hair quickly so I take like the mid-range color actually I asked for a photo of Charlotte's hair um, in a good light so I'm gonna download that quick can we firstly just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful Charlotte's hair is I'm very jealous what I do is just use the eyedropper tool I'm gonna pick up like a mid color this is again is trial and error a lot of the time I'll end up going back because I've not picked a color that's dark enough that'll do for now um, and then again same process create a new layer so each different color is a new layer um, don't forget that part because that is very important right I've outlined the kind of perimeter of the hair and because I'm going to put it underneath the face colour I'm just going to do this like that and then I don't have to go all the way around this bit fill that in and then if I put it in the right section if I move the skin layer up you can see that that line is gone and everything's in the right order all right hair is complete so i'm gonna do the eyes because that is looking increasingly creepy so again new layer and i just have pure white and then on the same layer and this is the only time i do this i pick up like a darker skin tony sort of pink shade and I just put a little bit in the corner because obviously the whites of your eyes don't go right to the corner. And I do that on the same layer because I never actually touch that layer again um, because there's no need to. Eyebrows. So let's again pick up a colour. It's just going to be like a light browny shade and I can always change the opacity. New layer again and what I do is outline and take it further. Ooh, try again take it further which looks crazy I've done that very wonky hang on let's just straighten that bit up okay <laughs> and then I do the same imagine if I just left them like that <laughs> we've all had eyebrows like that at some point let's be real then into the eraser I use a soft brush I bump it up quite high or actually I could use the medium soft brush and then I just smudge in the middle gradually and get rid of that harsh line that I initially created magic I'm actually going to adjust the pen layer because I feel like I've drawn this line a bit too far so again just go back to the hard airbrush I'm gonna go in and just adjust this line a little bit Right, so the eyebrows are done. I've done the little like fade thing. Next is the lip color, loving this lip color. New layer again, as always, and outline the lips. And as I'm zooming in, I keep finding flaws, which is absolutely fine. I've just noticed some white patches and there's also a white patch in here. This is the basic colors. Now I'm gonna do the eyes. So. For the eyes, it's very important to know what colour your client's eye is. So what I decided to do this time around, because I've learnt the hard way that cameras don't always do eye colour justice, I asked for people's eye colours. So let me show you this cool little thing I made. So I made this, which is a bunch of different eye colours, and Charlotte says she is 17. So I'm just going to crop that and import eye colour number 17. Again, I'm going to create a new layer underneath the drawing layer i should probably name all of them but the lazy life is my life i'm not lazy the lazy life chose me so i'm gonna try and pick up like a brown color let's try that color for now and i'm just gonna do one big block color now the cheats way of doing this would to be to just put this image in the photo but i don't want to cheat not today so once I've done the big block I then click on the layer 
and then click alpha lock i'm not going to go into alpha lock but if you want to know again that video i mentioned earlier that helps you out with that and then i'm gonna pick up a darker shade and just go around the edge so i don't know if you can actually see what i'm doing properly here but and then i take the smudge tool which is always on an airbrush setting for me and i just make it a bit smaller and I'm gonna blend it together. So just tiny little taps and like circular motions. And then get a lighter shade and put that sort of behind the pupil area. Ooh, maybe not that much. And then get the smudge tool again, or the, is it the smudge tool? Yeah. Just spread that out a little bit. So I'm sort of like blending together my own little DIY eye color. And then final touch, I put the smudge tool right down to basically one pixel and I'll drag it out. And I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. It adds those like lines that eyes have. <laughs> there we go. So that is that done. What I'm gonna do instead of having to do it twice, duplicate it like I did for the eyelashes. So duplicate, then click on the cursor, flip horizontal and we have the same little eyeball. Just gonna rotate it a little bit because obviously she's at a bit of an angle cool and then i'm just gonna turn the alpha lock on that one because off on that one sorry because there's a little bit extra down here there we go so we have the eye color we can get rid of that template layer now i'm gonna join those two layers together and then i always at this point create a layer on top of the uh, initial lines to do some little specs on the eyes because I think the eyes look so weird and flat like look at that give me a second and we'll compare the before and after and then you add some little dots and like look at the difference between those two eyes I think it just makes such a good difference when I was a photographer I always got taught to make sure there's always a little glint in both eyes otherwise you look a bit weird so there we go these are the final steps basically what i'm gonna do is the hair color first so i'm just gonna pick up that hair color again and go into its layer i'm gonna use alpha lock again alpha lock in short basically means you can't color outside the line so if i'm coloring in here with my brown pen um it won't go over the line let me just demonstrate so i'm coloring in blah 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 oops I've gone over the line it's not going to let me do it look because I've locked the layer so that's effectively what alpha lock does and what I'm going to do I'm going to um sort of try and replicate her ombre a little bit which I have a love-hate relationship with people that have ombre <laughs> because it's very pretty but really hard to draw I am not a hairdresser so it's very hard to replicate the hairdresser's amazing skills so i've done that i've kind of filled this weird big blob in i'm gonna cheat and sort of use the select tool so i'm gonna select the existing hair shape invert it so it's selecting everything else go back to my weird blob shape and then erase everything outside that shape hopefully that made sense i'm gonna just lighten that a little bit so i'll just change the opacity and i'm gonna add a couple of darker brush strokes to it so it blends in a little bit more right so we have the lighter little portion i'm gonna use that light color and go back into the alpha locked hair layer and there's actually a little strand of light hair up here <laughs> And there's a little strand sort of in there um, and there's also a little bit of highlights up here and what i'm gonna do is just add a few up here too cool really happy with that so far then i do the low lights so like the darker bits of her hair so again i can change the opacity or actually i'm gonna do it via this hair color so i'm just gonna pick up the original hair color and make it a bit darker and same principle again just in the shadowed parts
I'm gonna go in again with like a lighter shade. Right, I think I might have finished with the hair. I need to remember it's not gonna be completely realistic. It's a cartoon, that's the whole point. What I'm gonna go on to now, Oh, I've just remembered I need to do the earring. So again, just new layer. I'm gonna pick up the color of it. So it's like a silvery color. And what I do is just start out quite thin on the edge and then go thicker as I get closer. There we go. So now she has a little earring. And now I'm gonna do the shadows. So we're going into the face color section. I'm gonna alpha lock it again. And I'm gonna pick up a darker shade. I'm going to make sure my pen is now going on to the airbrushing tool. So different tool, soft airbrush. And what I do is sort of trace out roughly where the darker parts of her face are. So generally around the forehead, then in the cheekbones like this, and then around the bottom of the chin. I'll do that area first and then I use the smudge tool with the soft airbrush, sort of tap and blend. There we go, so she's coming to life a little bit more. I'm going to leave that cheek quite dark because it is on the image. Then I'll usually darken it up a little bit more again make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm gonna go in on the eyeshadow area and then go in here like this and again just smudge it out like you would proper eyeshadow and then it's the nose area and she's got a couple of like smile dimple things here And then I like to do the cupid's bow. I'm gonna do that whilst I'm here so I remember. Battery died. We're gonna have to flick into screen record mode because I have gone through three batteries whilst recording this video and I don't have any more, the other one's not charged. So you can still see what I'm doing but you just can't see my hands. Right, so we've done the shadows. Then I like to do a little bit of highlight. So again, I pick up sort of, I mean, she's got some good highlight here. I could pick this up or just pick up the skin tone and make it a little bit brighter and then same again but you can guess highlight the bits that generally are highlighted now quickly for the skin so like the chest area again alpha lock i'm going to select the chest color and i'm just going to choose a darker shade with the same soft airbrush that and I've also just realized Charlotte's got a little birthmark um on her chest and I can't believe that out can I because <laughs> it's a big part I should have done this at the beginning but obviously I missed it and I'm just gonna do a new layer and do sort of trace it a little bit I'm gonna go back to the ink into studio pen and just trace just change the opacity of the freckles a little bit and i think that is pretty much done so the final little touch which i like to call my little flourish is to do the little highlight bits so i'm back on the inking brush which is fine that's the one i need and i'm just going to do some little flourishes so i usually do one down the nose so she wants pastel or baby pink so i think i have a baby pink here i'm just going to adjust it a little bit like that and then i always add a little extra bit of dimension to it so i'll take a brush a big soft airbrush and then draw a little circle use the gaussian blur tool and just blur it out a little bit i'm actually going to use it as a pink color a bit of a darker pink shade on there and I like to just fill in these bits. And actually, I think I'm going to do my usual little accents. So I do a couple of little sparkles. 
and also I'm gonna do a little halo. And there we go, I finished. It's all complete. I'm really, really happy with it. Hopefully you guys learnt something from this video. And if you did, please do press the subscribe button. I'll be doing plenty more videos like this. Um, other videos to do with Procreate, if you would like them. I do graphic design videos, redesign videos. I do a whole bunch of different things. So if you have got this far in the video, firstly, well done. Secondly, please do press that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you very much. I'll see you soon for the next one. Bye.